Today's guest on Hustle and Pro is Jarell Krillich, and her message is that it's never too late. So Jarell didn't grow up as a kid playing a bunch of sports and being athletic, but later on she developed the love for running. And now she competes. Uh, she's actually an Ironman, so that means she completed a race where she swam two and a half miles and biked 112 miles, and then on top of that, ran a marathon. So enjoy this episode as we hear Jarell's story and we learn a little bit about virtual racing that she's launching here in Frisco this year. Tell me a little bit about your, your overall story as an athlete. I'm nearly 50 years old and I think most people who know me as an adult would be surprised to know that I, have, I do not have an athletic background, I was not an athletic kid. Um, in fact, when I was really young, I had asthma really bad and allergies really bad, and I actually have an autoimmune disease that affected me later in life, and I wasn't expected to be able to swim or run or do any of those things. And you know, when you're young and they put a label on you and they tell your parents like, this probably isn't a good idea for her to do, you know, people, especially back then, it was just, oh, don't, you know, she can't swim. You know, I remember watching my older sister taking her swim lessons in the lady that was teaching the swim lessons told my grandmother to put me in the pool too that you know my grandma was like no she can't do it and i i think that lady i mean i i was able to learn how to swim and it actually helped with my breathing yeah and i just Strength ended up and... having childhood asthma that later went away but um yeah i mean i just i wasn't a sporty kid i wasn't into sports i was kind of nerdy you know i I had fair skin, so I sunburned, and like the rest of my family has really dark skin, so they kept me out of the sun. You know, just all these things, you know? Yeah. So I just, it was just something that later in life, it became important to me. My health was starting to suffer, and you know, I was young, and it was just not something that I wanted for my life. So I've always been passionate about health and fitness and nutrition, I think because I had to be, and I think the end result of that is that I'm probably healthier now as a 50 year old than I would have been had I not had that, you know, path in the beginning. You know, if it wasn't something that I really had to focus on, I probably wouldn't have. When you say later in life, like what, when did that change from you not being athletic or sporty or outdoorsy or anything? Um, When did that change? I did do a few, I did do a few things in junior high. I went to Catholic school. It was one of those situations where it's like, please be on the softball team because we don't have enough people. You know, that kind of thing. And I just remember sitting on the bench a lot or being in outfield, like praying that the ball didn't come to me. To be a body yeah, on the team. Exactly. Yeah. I did do stuff like that, but that was it. And, um, and uh, I did do swim team in, in the summer because our neighborhood had a swim team, but I was terrible and I was horrified to do it. You know, it was just one of those things like I hated it. I wasn't good at it. I didn't want to do it. I struggled with it. Um, And then in high school, I had a really, really sporty friend who was very bossy, and she said, you can't just do nothing, you have to do a sport. And so she pretty much talked me into trying out for the track team. And so I just went along with the crowd at that age. I was like, okay. And it's funny because she's not a healthy person now and doesn't do any sports or whatever, but she was really an amazing athlete when we were younger. And I mean, she was probably the person who you know, kind of set me on this path, at least fitness-wise, you know. Who is that? Um, What's her name? Her name is Tyler Youngblood, and she lives in New York now with her daughter. And um, So when Tyler told you you have to do something and you tried out for the track team, were you instantly good? I, I, don't, I didn't think that I was, but I remember we, we did tryouts and I ran around the field and the coach right away told me, she said, you're doing the, you know, you're doing the 400. I think they, I think it's called the 440 now, but back then it was the 400. But she was like, she was like, oh, you're doing this. And I was like, okay. And I did get better. You know, I wasn't great. I got better and I, I you know, I, I did well well enough to be on the team in high school. But again, it was a Catholic school, so (laughs) it wasn't like super competitive. You know, we just didn't have a ton of kids that wanted to do track. (laughs) But um, but yeah, I mean, it was something I did and I I did enjoy it. So that is something, that's how I got into running and I've I've stuck with that pretty much all of my adult life. So I, um, I I had a bicycle in college. That's how I got around for transportation. And I ran, you know, as a runner. That's what I did for exercise. 
and I knew how to swim. You know, my par I grew up in Houston. We always lived close to water, and my parents were into water sports and things like that. So I knew how to swim. I was familiar with being in a lake environment, that kind of a thing. I was reading a magazine. I was traveling a lot at the time, and I read a magazine. It was just a little article. It was like a ladies' fitness magazine. And this lady had written in, and she had talked about her experience. She had trained for a sprint triathlon, and she was just a regular person, you know? And I was really inspired by the story. I thought, you know, I could, I know how to swim. I know how to ride a bike. I mean, I haven't swam in a long time, but I know how to do it. I know how to ride a bike, and I certainly can run. I was like, maybe this is something I can do. So I looked it up. There was a dance can triathlon series in Austin at the time. It was the only, like, all ladies race in our area and I it was like at the end of the summer and I had talked a bunch of friends into doing it and it's funny because there were originally like five of us that were going to do it but by the time the date came only two of us ended up doing it so it was me and this other girl <laughs> yeah. that I didn't even really know that Some well. Some people bailed on yeah, you oh, a bunch of people to bailed. Yeah, yeah they totally bailed and it was actually in a lake and everything so anyways I trained for that and I did it and my whole family came. You would have thought I was doing the Iron Man. I had an entourage of like 20 people because it was such a big deal in my family that someone was doing this. And I was just, I was hooked. I loved it. I thought it was a great experience. And, you know, I just did it to finish. But it was just so different to have a goal and to train for it and not just to be like, today I'm going to get up and exercise because it's healthy for me and I need to do it. Or, to, you know, today I got to run or go to the gym or do whatever. It was just more fun to have a goal. And since I'm not a super competitive person, I haven't played a bunch of team sports and things mm -hmm. like that, you know, I just, it was something I could do on my own, you know, but yet I had a goal and it was, I was working towards something. And then, you know, you go to the race and everyone's there and the triathlon community is just so supportive. Like you think that these veteran athletes are going to, you know, you're so scared, you think they're going to be rude to you or like you don't know what you're doing, but everyone just like when you're there, they want to help you, especially when they find out that you're new and yeah. you haven't done it. So it's just, it's an amazing community and people are so supportive and I've just always enjoyed it. I was hooked from the first time I did it. How many, how many marathons, you've run marathons too, right? Um, how many, like let's talk numbers of what do you think you've actually done? How many of these things? Look, I got, I got a drawer in my house that is full of medals. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I mean, I've been participating in 5Ks, 10Ks, like since I was in my 20s. I started doing triathlons when I was 30. Um, I think that was the first, the first time I did, the first one I ever did, the sprint, I was 30. Um, and I just kind of slowly worked my way up. I think two years later, I did an Olympic distance. And... When Ethan, when I had my son, when he was three, I did my first 70.3. And the reason why I did that is some friends that I was training with in my neighborhood, I trained for my first half marathon with them and I thought, okay, if I can actually run a half marathon, then I can do a 70.3. Because you have to run a, a half marathon at the end of a 70.3. So that's when I started doing 70.3s. <laughs> and I, I remember telling my husband after I did my first 70.3, I said, you know, I'll never do an Ironman. Those people are crazy. Like, I feel like I'm going to die right now. Like, that was such a long distance at that time to, you know, swim a mile, ride your bike 56 miles, and then run a half marathon. And it was like 100 degrees that day, or at least it felt like it was. And now, so how long from that time did you actually get into doing an Ironman? So I did my, I did my Ironman in 2015. And I, I guess... Ethan was 10 or 11, and he was like three when I did my okay. first 70.3. So several years went by before you yeah. didn't think it was so crazy. Yeah. You knew but you I, could tackle it. Yeah. But I've probably, like, ever since I did my first half marathon, I know I've done at least one or two half marathons every year. And for a while there, we were doing like a 70.3 every year. That was our big goal. I always do at least three triathlons a year because I want to get ranked as a USAT amateur athlete. I mean, I'm really into it now. It's funny because, you know, I just, when I think back and I, I don't have a background in sports, but it's just something that I've grown to love with time. And it's just something I'm passionate about letting people know that it's never too late to take charge of your life. Um, you know, movement is so important to our health. Um, you know, that's one piece of it, obviously, you know, what we eat and how we live, you know, all the lifestyle choices that we make. But 
you know, back in the 60s, people, you know, medical community really thought like, you're, these are your genetics, you're born with this, and this is, this is how you're gonna live your life. But, you know, science today tells us that we're more affected by our lifestyle choices than we are by our genetics. So, you know, you do have this genetic makeup and sometimes it's good to know what you're dealt with because you know what things you should avoid. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, I, I know for me that, you know, doing these things and I've, I've been able to find something that I enjoy, so I've been able to stick with it. I think one of the reasons why I've been so healthy and not had injuries is because I'm doing triathlon. Mm -hmm. So you're not just running every day. You know, sometimes you're right. swimming. You know, you're, you're doing other things. You're using different muscle yeah, groups. You're using, and different. Yeah, you're not just you know a marathoner where you're just running all the time. Because that can tear you down. Where you down? That can that can tear you down. You're yeah. not, you know. And I think um, you know I take rest days very. I'm very serious about rest days. Rest days are important. So you know that's just something that I'm passionate about like letting other people know like hey it's never too late you know it's never too late to get out there get active get moving you know whatever it is you know I'm not saying triathlon and running and riding your bike is for everybody it's certainly not that's just something I tend to enjoy sure but, but you can you can baby step and yes, do your own thing even if it's absolutely maybe your goal is you know how you people say couch to 5k maybe yeah. your goal is just to get to a 5k in yeah. the next year that's still something. Yeah. Listen, after I had my son, I thought, I mean, I did the Couch to 5K program, and I thought the first 5K I did after I had my son, I, thought, I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like, I'll never be fit again. You know, it just, that was, it was a, it was a goal again, like, just to do a 5K, you know, but it comes back, you know, your muscles have yeah. memory, but. That's good to know, though, that yeah. even you, who runs yeah, everything, I mean, I, the first still I, had to I, work I thought back I was, to it. Yeah, that last mile, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I don't know if I'm going to finish this 5K. You 5Ks know? are just right for me. Yeah. They're just <laughs> enough to where I enjoy it, I get tired, but yeah. it's not too painful or hard. I don't have to really train for it so much. I can pop out there and do it because I only run on a little bit here and there yeah. just for just for that that exercise, like you said. Um, but health-wise, you don't have to run 10 miles to be healthy. 5K yeah, is good. Sure. Yeah, 5K, family. We do family 5Ks. Yeah. I'm kind of, that's my thing. I yeah. don't, I mean, we'll do color runs and turkey trots and the fun things that are just, hey, let's all go and yes. run in a big group and yeah you know just for fun that's, but I do that's all, all those do. things too I love to we do the turkey trot every year as a family and it's not competitive I don't even like do my you know that you I don't you like don't chip. time me I yeah. don't care because the first mile we're walking there's yeah. so many people here but yeah I mean those are those are all great events like it's super fun to get out there with everybody it doesn't always have to be competitive you know at least yeah. for me I'm I enjoy it either way. Well, let's talk about some of those races then that we keep mentioning. Um, I would love to know, in your opinion, or what you think are some of the better Frisco or area races. Maybe, I know it's not just Frisco, but what do you guys run as a family, or what, do you, what would you want people to take notice of as far as races go? I really want to keep it local because you know I'm a Frisco, you know, I'm Frisco proud kind of gal. Um, I, you know, we moved here in 2002 when I first moved here, you know, we didn't have a huge running community, you know, and so a lot of times you did have to go to down to Dallas for bigger races, you know, to have that kind of experience. I mean, luckily now we have a lot of really big races in our own right. I have traditionally always done the turkey trot down in Dallas with my family. That's just something that we've done forever. My sisters and I have been here since the early 90s. I talked them into doing the Frisco race, you know, one year because um, we do do Thanksgiving up here at my house. <laughs> and the first year we did it, they were like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to do this. We want to keep doing Dallas. But then the next time they did it, you know, the race had grown so bigger. much. Yeah. yeah. And I was so excited to see Frisco doing a Thanksgiving run. I mean, it just makes sense. You know, we have all these families. It's a long way to go to get down to Dallas to do a family event. Yep. Nobody wants to get up early and drive down to Dallas. Same here. That's our yeah. exact same story. We I'm, used to do it every year traditionally in Dallas and would even haul kids in strollers. Yeah. And then once it was up here, oh, this it's just like less stress. Like, yes. it's like now we can so relax great. and go get coffee and hang out. Like before we were like, okay, we gotta get back in the car. We gotta rush back to Frisco because we gotta like make the turkey, turkey. Yeah. you know? So I'm, I, that's definitely one of my favorites. I'm happy to see that that's grown. That event has a really good, um, 
uh, I think that they're I think that they're one of the ones that's all volunteer driven. Um, that's a great race, and I, and like I said, it's it's exciting to see Frisco have its own Thanksgiving event. You know, we're yeah. we're our own place. You know, we're not just a bedroom community of Dallas. So that's one of my favorites. Um, Patty Dash was another one. Um, that was uh, that was one of the first races that we kind of started here in Frisco. Rotary Club started that one. Um, you know, Jeffrey Davis, I know, was on the first committee, and so was Cheney, the mayor at the time. You know, he was in Rotary Club. He wasn't the mayor. Um, they really got that race off the ground, and that's a fun family race, you know, that has a party atmosphere afterwards. So sure. that's one of my favorites. Um, Frisco Star, you know, the half marathon, you know, it's so great to have like a marquee event like that here in Frisco. I don't know if it's the, I don't think it's our largest event yet, but I think it will be soon. They're in their fourth year. That event was actually started by um, a few members of my tra tra uh, Frisco Triathlon Club, Jules Simon and her husband Paul and Dustin Pascal. They actually started that race. They're long term, long time runners. Um, really wanted to bring a half marathon here to Frisco. That's another race that's all volunteer driven, and it has just grown immensely since We're, they started it. We, as Lifestyle Frisco, are going to be involved in that this year. Oh, that's awesome. So, yes, yeah, so um, I'm excited. I haven't done that. I haven't ever yeah. been to it. Tell yeah. me about it. Like, wh where is it? Well, they're at Collin Co College. Um, they, they were at um, FC Dallas initially. And then I think it's just grown so much that they had to move to Collin College. I've only run it once because our tri club really supports that race with volunteers on race day. So I'm usually working a water station <laughs> the day of the race. But I did run it one year when it was at FC Dallas. And I actually PR'd that. That was because awesome. I had a really good friend run it with me and she's faster than me. So she made sure that I you know, got my PR time for the half marathon. That's right. It'll probably never run the half marathon that fast. So again. what was that time? It was like 158. So it's under two hours. And normally, if I'm just running, like, um, just cruising along, like, I'm going to come in at like 210, 215. So that, you know, and that's just, that's just the difference of somebody pacing yeah, you, yeah. you know. It's one of the things that our Frisco Tri Club, we want to, and, and all the clubs in the area, we want to support, you know, growing, running, and all of these things in our area. So we will, we do tend to support some of these bigger events. And, you know, I'm not to say that we don't have some people out participating that day, but usually we are providing some sort of volunteer support. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, Somebody's some, got to put it together. Somebody's got to do it. If that's you, right. Frisco Tri Club, you've been involved from the beginning? Pretty much. Um, Marsha Foster and Kathy Dan started the club in 2008, and I joined right after they started the club. I actually didn't realize that, um, so they do credit me with being a founding member, but it wasn't my idea. I've, I've been, I just, I, um, I had been training for triathlons by myself forever, and I went somewhere and I saw someone wearing a T-shirt, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, there's a, there's a tri club in Frisco! Like, tell me about it." You know, I think this was even before. When did Facebook blow up? You know what I mean? Because right. this was like, I don't know you when. know, people I think were on Facebook in 2008, but I don't know that I was. Well, but now there's a new Facebook group club every day. Yeah. You're but, you saying know, it was like, before, it was just organically, yeah. you guys found each like, other. Like, I don't even know if they had a website right. yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, yeah, I've been involved since the beginning. The club has grown quite a bit. You know, like, I think every year when we, like, renew and make everybody pay their dues and like reset the Facebook page. We always have like 300 active members. That doesn't wow. mean that there's 300 of us that show up to every group workout or every group ride. But I mean, that's 300, you know, triathletes in, you know, the Frisco area. There's, I wouldn't have guessed that yeah. there's that many. No, I don't I, know. No, there's, there's definitely that many. Um, we have, that's pretty amazing. there's another, there's another local club, TNT multi-sport. Um, there, that's another Frisco club that's local here. And is multi-sport really the same thing as? Yeah, as that's just the, that's just what they okay. call their. You know, they're they're a triathlon club. There's actually a ton of triathlon clubs in this North Texas oh, yeah. area, and you know, the triathlon community. We all do things together all the time. It's not like, you know, it's like yeah, we're different clubs when we go and compete at events and everything. And it's just fun to have, you know, your teammates there mm -hmm. with you. It just makes it a more fun experience. But it's not like 
we're competing against each other. It's not like rival schools showing up. I mean, of course, there's some competition, you know, but, you know, like we always want to beat TNT and vice versa just because, like, we're both from Frisco, but we yeah. support each other too. Like, we're happy to see them do well. And, um, you know, like, it's more fun when there's like three people from Frisco Tri Club on the podium, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. It's pride of your, yeah, of your just pride. Group. Yeah, sure. right. But it's, it's, it's really just about having people to train with, you yeah. know. Tell me about the Frisco Fit City Challenge, because this is different. This is not your typical 5, 10K, whatever. Yes. It's, it's different in that it's a virtual challenge and race, right? Yes. So yes. tell us what that is, who should know about it, and how people should jump into it. Okay. Well, this is, you know, virtual racing is, is, is pretty, it's new, but it's been around for a little while. I think it's probably new to mass you know, um, to the general public, I think it's really, really new. Um, but for, you know, athletes who've been really familiar with like using their Garmin and Strava and all these other things, and for people who aren't familiar with Strava, it's kind of like a Facebook for athletes. So they do, you know, there's some virtual racing, you know, where people will go out and they'll just race and upload their time and compete that way, just virtually, like using a virtual platform. It's something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, you know, plan an event here in Frisco that was virtual. People can sign up to participate in a 5K or a 10K and they can go out and they can run it anywhere they are. You know, we hope that they'll run here in Frisco somewhere, right? But they'll just run their 5K, 10K, upload their time and compete that way. So that's one of the things that we're doing. We're hosting a live, um, 5K on May the 18th and a live virtual 10K on May the 25th. And those are actual races where people can compete virtually. You know, really the goal for the Frisco Fit City Challenge, it's a 20, we also are hosting a 21 day challenge and that's what we're calling a move what you can challenge. And that's really for my non-movers, you know, my people who are maybe too, you know, intimidated by going out and, you know, a 5K race and a 10K race isn't a good starting point for most people. And not everyone's a runner. So we want people at any age, any stage of life, any physical ability to be able to participate. So that's, you know, the Frisco Fit City Challenge really is more about the 21-day fitness challenge, is getting people up, getting them out, getting them moving, getting them ha ha active, hopefully creating, you know, a habit, a healthy habit with their family, friends, whatever it is. Um, the, the event is 100% uh, benefiting Power to Move, and they're a local charity here in our area, and their mission is to help people with um, physical and um, mental disabilities um, be active. So do you see yourself as an athlete now, right, Shirley? I don't, you know, it's funny, I, you know, I think I had told you this, but you know, my mom always teases me and says, you have to stop saying that you're not an athlete, you know? And I mean, on race day, when I go and I race, because I've gotten more competitive over time, I spend so much time training, I just love it, you know? And I have, you know, <laughs> started to make the podiums in my age group and stuff locally. And it's just fun, because someone like me, I've never won anything, <laughs> you know, I've never won anything in my life till it's like in my 40s, so it's crazy. But I mean, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess I should say that I'm an athlete. I just, I just still like, I'm the person on race day that takes the time to encourage everybody else when I'm jogging past you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not so like hardcore athlete that I'm like, I'm gonna suffer the most because I'm gonna win. You know, like, I feel like if I really, really was an athlete, I'd probably win every time. Because <laughs> I, you know, like, I just, I don't have that like, super duper competitive spirit that I'm just willing to do whatever yeah. it takes to win. Like you're not in overdrive about it yeah, all the I time. Just, I just, I'm always just trying to beat myself. You know, like I want to do better than my last time. And, um, and, and even if I don't have a good race day, it's still a race day and it's super fun. I will, I'm going to commit to doing that challenge and being oh, at whichever one of those I can virtually yeah. do and yeah, yeah, be a yeah. part of with my yeah. family that day. I love the idea. I think it's great. So yeah. thanks I for your time. You I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Next time me. I'm running a 5K or a, well, that's as far as I ever go, 5K, I'll think about you and channel your inner Ironman. Yeah. Man. Okay. Sounds good. Deal.